Good afternoon, YouTube. Tire Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully, you guys are doing well. Hopefully, you guys are warm, especially towards the northern tier of the U.S. Because we got a lot going on here. We're not going to really delay anything here. We already kind of know the deal here. Oops. So, we're going to go ahead and actually jump over to Radar Omega this time for a slight change of pace. And we're already going to go over some of the uh, winter uh, weather alerts that we have issued right now, as well as these areas right here that are in the solid color not the polygons which is our uh, winter severity index right here <clears throat> excuse me so this winter weather area here this is called the winter storm severity index this is to provide people with the information of what kind of impacts you could expect with this these areas in the white winter weather conditions are possible and can affect your travel conditions especially but beyond that it's nothing too far out of the norm unless you're down here then the impact kind of increases a bit but over towards these areas this is nothing out of the norm for you guys so yeah but when we get to the orange that's when we start seeing more minor impacts and then the uh, lighter orange colors are the moderate impacts and then as we get into the darker orange, that's when we get major impacts. And there's a couple areas here that look like we even could see some extreme impacts. I'm trying to see if I could click on it. Yep, there it is. So basically, this is just highlighting what you could be dealing with while the uh, winter weather is ongoing. So this is, of course, with this being a significant winter storm, we have our advisories, our watches and warnings in effect. These areas in the blue here are winter storm watches. Our winter storm warnings are in the purple here. And then we also have our winter weather advisories augmented along with it, in both the Northeast and the Central Plains. And we're starting to creep into the Ohio Valley. I think within the next six to 12 hours, we'll start to see these uh, winter storm watches extend further to the East and maybe even to the South a little bit. But we'll just have to play along and see how things go. When we look at the radar here as well, one thing this is also why I pulled up Radar Omega. It's to uh, highlight how little snow there is starting out right now. But this is going to pick up in, in intensity as this low starts to move in and that look and that uh, trough will start to deepen. There's plenty of cold air with the system. We already know this for a fact. And as time goes on, these areas are going to be of greater interest. We still have some questions on where this low will track, so I'm still not r quite ruling out areas like Atlanta, maybe even Birmingham and uh, far northern Mississippi for some potential uh, winter weather. How significant will be it will be will be the qu will be uh, also in question here due to how much moisture will be available. But let's go ahead and get into it now then. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, National Weather Service map. So we know where our winter weather alerts are. But a big topic with this storm system, which also has now, which also has been now named uh, Winter Storm Elliot, we also know the significant cold, and here is where we start to go into that, covering our uh, winter, our uh, wind chill warnings that are now in effect throughout most of the uh, northern plains here. This even has started to stretch into parts of. Uh, Missouri here. I do expect some of these wind chill warnings to stretch a little bit further to the south and east as time goes on. Oklahoma, I could see you getting into these wind chill warnings, as well as parts of um, Texas, even maybe towards uh, Kentucky and Tennessee as well. But for right now, since we're about 48 hours plus out, we are looking at wind chill, wind chill, um, not advisory, but wind chill watches. I'm not used to seeing wind chill watches because usually you don't see these things far out this far out in advance. Maybe up here you do, but beyond that, but around here it's just kind of a it's kind of a uh, mind bender, so to speak. But anyway, we also have a relatively new, a relatively new advisory that I'm not used to seeing as well, and that's a hard freeze watch. And this is towards the southern parts of. Um, the southern parts and central parts of Mississippi as well. Louisiana's in this as well. Eastern Texas too. And parts of southern Alabama. We may even see southern Georgia get involved in this too within time. 
there's no advisories on the northeast just yet it's just a little too far out but i but don't worry if you're looking for advisors your time is coming but let's go ahead and take a look at the snow that's fallen as of right now over the last 48 hours not a whole lot unless you're in the higher elevations. some of these spots over here have gotten up to about 18 inches but for the most part it's going to be scattered areas of about six to eight inches areas in the orange and red you're getting that's when you're starting to get above the foot range and then we have isolated pockets of snow over here towards uh, the great lakes towards minnesota and wisconsin the up of michigan mainly we're seeing reports of about two to four inches a couple of pockets where we have six inches but beyond that nothing really going on there then towards the interior north uh, the the uh interior of um northeast maybe towards i would say buffalo and maybe starting to flirt with the adrian decks we're starting to see some moderate to heavy snow here we're seeing reports of about maybe uh 18 to 24 inches keep in mind this is over the last 48 hours then of course towards the higher elevations of maine where it's always active nothing new there plenty of snow where we're getting and we're getting areas up to about a foot so that's what we have going on right now this map will look a lot different over the next three days though so get ready for that let's go ahead and actually look at the wind chills here because that is going to be a big talking point so here we are taking a look at the uh, wind chill index and uh, heat index here and it's really not until the end of this model run we're looking at the name here this time because we're only going to cover this bit by bit there's no point in trying to continually talk about it we're kind of hammering out the time frame in which things are really going to start to go downhill towards montana things have already you're pretty much already a shoe in you're already experiencing these extreme wind chills where we're getting to about 30 to 40 below and this is only going to intensify as we go onward and it's really not until i would say thursday afternoon where this cold really starts to take over so to speak and once we get into friday morning that's when we'll really start to see that cold really just put the boom down on all of us but even on thursday these uh negative wind chills will start to work their way into the uh, southern plains here look at texas this is towards southern texas we're getting wind chills in the teens i mean it's above zero but it's gonna feel like you're it's gonna feel like you're in the uh, arctic for a lot of these people because they are not used to these temperatures and then over towards oklahoma you're actually looking at seven below zero in oklahoma city tulsa you're at negative seven and then over towards the uh missouri and mississippi valleys we're getting into those uh s single digits to uh below zero temperatures and then we'll watch this stretch out to the east towards the end of this model run here we're even getting into those uh, negative 20s by the end of this towards uh, the early morning hours of Friday around Chicago. We're looking at a negative 27. Indy, we're looking at possibly a, a negative 21 in the uh, overnight hours. And all this will be happening as this system's coming in. So this is going to be a very interesting situation to watch unfold here let's go ahead and start to look at the snowfall because there have been a few changes here we'll start out with the gfs which is just about finished loading now it's almost 550 so that's right on schedule so this is 18z this is the newest gfs right now I haven't really had a chance to even look at this so we'll run this forward and again things don't look too much different but this moisture shield has trended a little bit further south. This low is a little bit further south, but not by much. But it seems like more and more people are starting to be in play for the southeast on this one. This also is a little more progressive too, actually. When I look at the uh, amplitude of the, uh, of the system, it's a little less progressive, actually, I would say. So it might take a little bit longer, but this also may increase your snow chances out here. So... There's still a lot to watch with this system. The cold is a shoe in. The snow and the preset part is going to be the key is going to be the uh, key thing to watch at this point now. Hopefully everyone's prepared for this part now because we've known for a while that the extreme cold is coming. 
the rest is really the rest is really up to you guys from this point. Moving this along now, we're probably going to start to shift over to the, to the uh, Euro and the GDPS to make a little comparison here. And this is towards Christmas Eve. Things look like they start to clear out by this point. Have to keep an eye on this little clipper system to bring in some additional snow on Christmas night. Or not Christmas Eve, but this will be Christmas Day heading into night at this point. And it looks like some additional snow could be possible for the Dakotas. And then we'll watch this uh, clipper kind of die out now. And we'll just kind of go from there. As things look like they will start to quiet down, although a new system looks like it will be emerging around the northwest on the 27th. Let's go ahead and jump over to the euro. This is the 12z euro. This is not updated to the 18z just yet. Probably have at least another hour before that happens. So we're just working with what we have here. It's a pretty similar look up to this point. That's when things start to become more questionable. This load has tracked a little bit further south than what the euro was showing yesterday. But that moisture shield, that's the key That's the key uh, component here. It looks like uh, that moisture is starting to outrun the cold air here. There could be some potential for a little tail end of snow here. But for the most part, I'm thinking Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia... And towards the southern part of the Ohio Valley, looks like they could get some big-time snow. Could see blizzard conditions around here as well, so we'll have to keep an eye on that too. This setup actually starts to favor a little bit more of the uh, mid-Atlantic, especially towards the coast. New York could see some wraparound snow, especially on the tail end of this. So there is hope for you guys on having a white Christmas over there for sure. And of course, we see our next system coming in on Christmas Day. Mainly going to be a big thing for the Dakotas by that point. And then as we head into the 26th, we'll have to watch and see what this clipper ends up doing from that point. We're starting to trend away from the southeastern type of look like we've been over the last few days, though. All right, so now that we've got that, let's go ahead and lastly look at the GDPS. It's the Canadian model. And we can clearly see what's going on here with this. It's a similar look. Moisture Shield is kind of trending along more so with the Euro than the GFS on this one. We'll have to see what the OOZ run with this is. That's going to be a while. So I'm going to have to just uh, hammer things out with that. But it's a pretty similar look. GDPS is kind of maintained its trend a little bit if anything it's trending a little further south just a tiny bit in fact actually i think this is trending a little further south than both the gfs and the euro but the moisture shield is the main is the uh, main difference that i'm seeing so far then of course it's a similar deal with christmas morning it looks like there's an interesting layer of a uh, warm air loft too so two around uh montana and parts of uh, western, oh, the western, both the Dakotas, really. So this could lead to a uh, sleet and ice event, too, for some of you. So we'll have to watch that, too, because if there's anything people don't want, myself included, it's definitely ice. And then we'll have to watch that clipper, because it uh, the Canadian has this becoming a big, a really big thing, and then ends up, oh, wow. This has this ending up uh, being a very big system, like a big time uh, ice storm over towards the southeast, which is kind of alarming. Thankfully, there's not a lot of model agreement on this. Otherwise, I'd be quite nervous because that's right over my area. So that's pretty much all we have there. And we'll probably start talking about the New Year's forecast probably tomorrow or Thursday. We'll see what happens with that. Last thing to do here is, of course, look at the snowfall totals. We're moving this to about 144 hours out. This is mainly just covering uh, Elliot in this case. We'll have to see what else happens with any of the other winter storms, but we're mainly concerned about this. So let's jump over to the uh, Euro first. Euro has a lot of the southeast stiff, 
but over towards um, Kentucky, towards the Ohio Valley, a lot of you guys are going to be seeing light snow, I'd say about an inch in a lot of places. Towards western, uh, far western, or far eastern West Virginia, man, that sounds so weird to say that, but uh, towards the mountain regions here, towards the mid-Atlantic in the Virginias, we could see some scattered areas of about six to eight, maybe even ten inches in a couple of places. But for the most part, predominantly, we're going to be seeing about one to two inches in the valleys. Once we get further into the uh, Adrian Dax, we're seeing, we're expecting areas to see a foot of snow possible in those regions. When we get towards the Great Lakes, snow totals increase a bit. We start to get to 18 to 19 inches. A little bit bold in my opinion, but we'll have to see what goes with that. What goes on with that there. Once we get towards these lakes here again, getting close to a foot, maybe a foot and a half. Michigan is going to be a major point of interest. I think this is where that snow shield is going to be really strong. I do think blizzard conditions are possible in pretty much this entire region right here. So we'll have to see where things go with that. But I'm thinking a lot of areas could be seeing up to about a foot, foot and a half of snow. Someone in here is going to end up getting two feet of snow, in my opinion. It's just hard to say who at this time. And then there's a big swath of snow expected through the uh, Dakotas here. Mainly going to be about somewhere between three and five inches. A couple areas could see about six inches plus. And then, of course, through the uh, plains here, we're mainly looking at one, two, maybe three to four inches. A couple spots could see about five to six inches. But that's what the Euro is looking like. We switch this over to the uh, Canadian. Not too much different. Makes sense considering how those two seem to be falling a little bit into agreement here. But the, there is some slightly aggressive, more aggressive points like towards uh, Indiana, Iowa, and parts of um, the boot part of uh, Minnesota, and a small little swath of a uh, six to eight inch snow possible in uh, North Dakota in particular. Other than that, not too much different there. GFS is a little bit more, a little bit more interesting. It often tends to be more aggressive with the snow. GFS has parts towards uh, Buffalo seeing almost 32 inches of snow. You guys just can't catch a break. You just seem to get caught in the, in the hot zone or cold zone all the time, if you will. And other than that, it's not too dissimilar. Some slightly more aggressive totals, but not too much more beyond that. The track of the system is going to depend, going to um, determine a lot with this. Towards the southeast, though, this does put you in play. Less than an inch of snow would be possible for accum in, a, in regards to accumulation. And there's still a lot of questions with that, other variables that have to go into that as well. Then lastly, we'll look at the... Oops. I didn't mean to do that. And then the last but not least, of course, we're going to take a look at the Blender Models. Blender Models has this pushing a little bit further off to, I would say, the... Uh, north a bit and this is a pretty happy medium i would say a lot of these areas are expecting about maybe three four to five inches of snow some areas could see six over towards the uh, northern plains it's really when the low starts to deepen here where that snowfall is going to be the most intense especially on the northern side of this this is where we could start to expect two feet of snow possible mainly towards michigan especially towards the up Blizzard conditions are likely here. I think I would like to say I would also like to also add in there uh, about a foot and a half of snow possible off of some of these lakes here. There's one spot over here. I'm thinking this is over towards Buffalo, and I hate to say it, but you still could potentially see two feet of snow. The Blendo models is also kind of leaning more towards a lighter snow event towards the Tennessee Valley and even the Ohio Valleys as well. So we'll have to kind of go from there, go with that there. Adrian Dax, you're going to look a little bit lighter on this one than the last system. I'm thinking mainly between four to six inches of snow for a lot of regions. There's little pockets here and there where you could see about uh, six to ten inches of snow. It's a broad range, but that's what that's just what I'm going to have to go with there for right now. And then over towards Maine, we could be seeing up to about... We could be seeing mainly... Um, ha, mainly... 
two to four inch snow, snowfall totals, some pockets of six inches or, or more. One area could even see about 10 inches possibly over towards this uh, northwestern corner here. But beyond that, that's pretty much all we got. This is the this is when the snow will be the uh, most impactful around these regions, and actually, I might actually I'm kind of curious. I want to take a look at the ice totals as well. I'm not expecting a whole lot out of this as far as ice is concerned. I think it's going to be too cold, too much warm air loft. But there is a little bit of rain that ends up forming out ahead of this, so ice potential does seem like a thing. And mainly, the totals will be relatively minute. But we do have to watch for any areas that could potentially be seeing a uh, tenth or more of ice because that's where road conditions will start to be very treacherous. Hopefully by this point, I don't know if you've been told by uh, public officials, but they, they are very much discouraging you being out on the roads by this point, pretty much starting from Thursday, especially over in these regions. So let's try and heed those warnings. Because is it, is it really worth it? Is it really worth being out here to deal with the ice? I mean, if you're used to it, by all means, go right ahead. But other people might not be. And remember, when you drive on the road, you have to account for other people. But, all right, this is definitely the end of the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed everything I did here. If you did, drop me a like, of course. Let me know in the comments where you are exactly. Or not exactly, like where you are, which city you're near. And, uh what you might be expecting or if you're curious about if you're going to even get snow at all but other than that uh this has been tire metal at weatherman appreciate you guys being here and i will see you guys probably tomorrow morning honestly so until then take care